Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to debrief on the hands-on exercise 2-4 at the end of chapter two. And here's our code, and when we run it, it creates this web page. And if we order fried chicken and a side salad and submit, our total is $14.98. The $14 comes from the cost of the items, and then the 98 cents comes from tax. So that's what our JavaScript is doing. If we order everything on the menu, then our bill is quite a bit more. The code to create this is all coming from a function calc total that is being triggered on an event listener, the click event of the submit ID. So all the code in this exercise is in this calc total function. And by now you know how to declare variables. Here's item totals being set to zero. Item one is being set to the element with the ID of item one. And on our one, two, three, four, five items, we've just got them ID'd item one, item two, item three, item four, and item five. So we're using the same variable names as we did the ID names. Our code checks if item one is checked, if the checkbox is true, then do the true part of the statement, else do the false part of the statement. And so this is the new thing you've seen a one line if then else statement before, but you've maybe never seen this compound operator. And all that means is we can take the first part of that and put it over here. And that's what the plus equals means. It means item total, set it equal to whatever it was plus eight. But a shorthand way of doing that is the plus equal sign. Now when I'm learning something new, I don't like these shortcuts because they kind of confuse what's really going on. So if you want to write your statements like this, just for clarity, feel free. These extra spaces around the operators do not matter, but just to keep things really nice and tidy, I like to put a space before and after each one of my operators. So what this means is if item one is checked, then item total is equal to item total at first at zero, plus eight. If item two is checked, then we would take eight and add it to nine, and now item total would be set to 17. Else, item total is adding itself to zero. So this is kind of a confusing statement as well. It would be clearer, I think, if item total is set to item total plus zero. But then again, if you're adding zero, then why add anything at all? So we would just say item total is equal to item total. So there are many different ways we could have written this false part of the statement. The main thing I'm trying to debrief on here is what this plus equal sign means. And it just means to take the item and add it to the number on the right and stick that total back into that variable name. So far, we've run all of our event listeners on the click event. And that is obviously very popular because as your user is working on this web page, they are going to be clicking with the mouse. But that's not the only event that we can use to trigger a function name. Notice back in our chapter on our event listener, we used the change event. So we were triggering that code every time the photo number or the hours or the memory book every time it changed. So we were treating that JavaScript every time this changed, not just when I was clicking on the element, but every time the element changed, no matter if I was changing it manually or clicking on it, that total was recalculating because the JavaScript was being triggered on the change event. A third event that I'm very fond of is the blur event, B-L-U-R. That happens when the user tabs out of an input box. You can run JavaScript on the blur event. Thank you.